Alright, I'm going to run a little bit through um, NDVIs. Um, sorry, there's a small man trying to eat the first aid box here. <coughs> right, I've got here um, some footage from the uh, <coughs> the flights at Adam Henson's farm. Um, these are shot by the uh, the aerial optics guys, um, but they they link up here. These were shot. Hello, got rid of the wrong thing. These were shot on a different day than than country file, um, and it's a slightly different area. Um, the field that we were shooting on was was up here. This is uh, well slightly lower. Um, on the left hand side, we've got uh, spring oats, and on the right hand side, we've got spring barley. I think. Um, Sorry, spring barley on the left, spring oats on the right. So, the bits that we need to do uh, the NDVI, which stands for Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, um, are the red spectrum and the, the near infrared spectrum. So, if I pop the formula up now, um, this is this is the formula for NDVI. Um, it's near infrared minus the red band divided by near infrared plus the red band. Um, NDVI, so the normalized difference vegetation index. Uh, vegetation index just says what it is. Um, normalized difference, so the difference part is the near infrared minus red, and the um, the normalization part is the fact that it's divided by that plus red. So in theory, um, you wouldn't have to calibrate your your sensor so much because um, you're normalizing it against the data. So as long as the ratio between the red and the near infrared stays the same, it shouldn't make a difference uh, in theory. So this is our false color composite. This is the the imagery that comes off the drone. Um, this is how it's been to provided to me by uh, by the guys at Aerial Optics. Um, so I'm assuming it's it's all. Uh, corrected those are some interesting little patches here which I'm, I'm not sure whether they're uh, changes in vegetation cover or cloud shadow um, if they're cloud shadow that would potentially um, do some interesting things with the results so from this we need the two bands we need the red band and the near infrared band um, they've sent these to me separately um, the red band looks like this so this is just the information uh, in in the red spectrum, so only things that are coloured towards the red end. Um, so your green vegetation, very green vegetation, is going to come out slightly less strongly on this because it's well because it's picking up red. Um, your unhealthy vegetation is going to come out a little bit more strongly on this. So we've got red, and we've also got near infrared. <coughs> so near infrared is reflected uh, strongly by healthy vegetation. So you'd expect to see healthy vegetation being quite bright, um, and it's not reflected quite so strongly by unhealthy vegetation, so they're a bit darker. Um, some of the areas, there's a big dark area here, so that's potentially something not growing well. Could also just be some bare ground. Um, here, this is bare ground, and it's coming up very, very dark color because it's not reflecting much in near infrared at all. It's all being absorbed. Um, the tram lines here, down the field. These are also absorbing a lot of near infrared, not reflecting it back. Um, just a word of note, this is I've downscaled this to, to two meter resolution. The resolution that comes off the drone, let me bring some of that in. Uh, this one here. If we zoom in a bit more, there's quite a bit of detail on that, but if I'm processing all of that um, just for a demonstration video, it's going to take a while, so I've, I've downscaled it. To, this is four centimeters, um, indeed. I've downscaled this to two meters, um, just so I speed up my processing on this computer, just for the demonstration. So, we've got near infrared and red. Now, the formula we had was is near infrared minus red over near infrared plus red. So let's just, I can resize that. Let's pop that up here somewhere. There we go. So we've got our, our two different bands we've taken out. Um, now we need to go into our raster calculator. So we go up here, raster calculator, and I'll just blow that a bit bigger up. Ooh, that's not it. What is that? 
Uh, Rust calculator. Hello. There. Right. So this is a slightly blown up version of the Rust calculator. My uh, my original one is behind there. Um, I thought this this big one would be be a little bit easier for you to see. So here is our indeed. Ooh. <laughs> here is our our false color composite. So this is the the color version um, of the map we saw before with the interesting colors, um, and this is the information that comes off the camera. So the the EV camera. So band one at one is uh, the near infrared. Band two, which says at two, is red. Band three is um, green. Now I've taken out band one and two separately. Uh, here they are here. So those are the ones I just showed you before. Um, near infrared, two meters, and red, two meters. So we've got our, our NDVI formula, which is near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red. Hello, someone's trying to climb on my leg. <laughs> Hello, my cutie. Ooh. So, in here, we can put that formula in. So, let's start with a bracket. And we do near infrared, if you just double click it. Minus red. Close bracket. Divide by open bracket again, near infrared, plus red, close bracket. And that's our, our formula. It looks a little different here, so if we, uh, if we just put on a different row, so it's resembling it a little bit more closely. Um, our original formula, near infrared, minus red. Here we've got our near infrared layer, minus our red layer, divided by near infrared layer, plus red layer. It's the same thing. So now we want to save it. Uh, documents, download even, uh, NDVI. And okay. And there is our, our layer that's come down. Ooh, and it's weirdly blown up. There we go. <coughs> there is our layer that's come down off the, uh, out of the raster calculator. So we can style this. Um, ignore the maximum minimum values because these are within one standard deviation so if we just do a, a pseudo color um, I've got a, an NDVI style which you can get uh, if you go new color ramp and then choose it from the Crypt City thing there and there's should be no, no. Uh, there should be one of these should be um, the NDVI one I'm not quite sure where it is, ah there it is under QGIS So I'm going to use that one. Um, our minimum wants to be from zero to one, because that's the usual scale. Uh, anything below zero, it'll uh, chuck in with with the zero lot. Right. I'm not a hundred percent happy with that one. The one I like goes from red to green, but I can't be asked to make one for this. Um, I'm going to use this one. It looks looks alright. So now we just go apply. Okay. And there is our NDVI. Uh, yeah. So immediately, what we can pick up is is the areas of, of hard standing it's picked up. Um, so the roads down the bottom, the uh, the large flat area there, um, some other standings there. There's some little areas here where we've got uh, areas of quite low growth, so a, lo a darker red, uh, orangey surrounded by also areas of, of slightly lower growth. Um, here we've got a very bald patch um, which if we... I don't know whether when Google Satellite was taken so I'll just bring that in and have a look. Oh, okay. There was some trees there. No, there's not. Hang on. I know what I'll do. Okay, so that now looks like um, these colours are very odd. Let me change the order of this. That's better. So what I told you before, when I said band one was near infrared, band two was red, band three was green. Not quite right. Okay, band two is uh, red. That's right. 
band 3 is near infrared and band 1 is green. Big correction. But the, the red and near infrared layers that I had here are, are correct. Ah, so this area here on our Google satellite, which I don't know when it's from, um, shows a little island with some trees in, which has obviously been removed. Um, but for whatever reason, um, the vegetation isn't growing there. So that's getting picked up quite clearly on the NDVI. I mean, you can pick that up with your naked eye. Um, but areas like this here, it's also a little bit bald. Uh, let's have a look here. Can't really tell here so much. So this is where the NDVI really comes into its own um, because here it's identifying quite a large area of not such high growth um, which on the other one you can just about tell with the false colour um, if I had a, a, a visual range like the Google satellite you probably wouldn't be able to tell either um, and certainly when your crop gets higher you wouldn't know because it would be in the middle somewhere so with our, ha, which order was it? Um, it was barley on the left, wasn't it? <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, with the, the field on the left, um, there's some areas here of, of slightly lower growth. Uh, a little bit here. Some little areas here. The tram lines obviously are going to be lower growth, but that's, that's farming, isn't it? Uh, not so obvious on the uh, on the false color composite, but really it picks it out quite nicely with the um, with the NDVI. Uh, can't really do a huge amount on on the other field because there's only a little bit of it there. Um, but there's some some big areas up there where there's a little bit less growth. Yeah, so the the data we've got here isn't. Um, calibrated 100% so I wouldn't want to use this for um, prescribing any kind of treatments for for these areas um, certainly you know I'd want to be going through the agronomist um, to try and pin down what what treatments are actually needed um, whether it's an increase in fertilizer in these areas or whether there is simply no vegetation there such as as this patch here where it's pointless spraying on some some fertilizer if if there's nothing there growing um, but yeah, this is you know this is another another tool in the uh, toolkit of the agronomist.